your name, Lord Jesus. I bless your name, O oh Father God. I honor you for you are faithful. I honor you for you are true and you are king. I honor you for never, you never change. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for the things you do. Thank you for your goodness in our lives. Thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. Thank you for your word in our lives. You never change. You remain the same. Today, tomorrow, forevermore. You never change. You remain the same, God. I call on your holy name. I call on your holy name. Do it again in our lives, oh Father. Do it again in our community. Do it again, do it again, do it again. La basura yana masa da da de. I bless your holy name, God. For you are faithful for the things that concerns man. You are faithful for the things that concerns your creation. You are faithful for the things that concerns your children. We are before thee, Lord Jesus. We are before thee, Lord Jesus. We are before thee, Lord Jesus. Let the Lord God, every word of petitions, let, oh Lord Jesus, every word of prayer that has been risen unto you, God, that has been lifted up unto you, Lord Jesus, unto it before your throne. Let those petitions, Lord God, meet a favorable time, meet a favorable time and hour. Let those petitions, Lord Jesus, be filled with your incense, be filled with your perfume. Let it be, God, that you speedily answer, that you speedily answer. Let your hand, let your hand speedily bring it about uh, the answers of the prayers uh, that have been risen up unto thee. Lord Jesus, uh, we call on you. Uh, we call on you uh, because you are true, uh, because you are God, uh, because you are king, uh, because you never change. Uh, only father of light, uh, only father of all things, uh, good and perfect. Uh, that come from thy throne. We honor you now. We honor you, God. We honor you, King. We honor you, Master. We honor you, Lord. Ancient of days, rock of ages, the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star. We honor you, Lord Jesus. We bless your holy name, God. Hura Fobosiri. Liabaso Fokoro Sobra Beli. You are faithful. You are faithful. Oh, yes, Lord, you are faithful. You are faithful, God. You are faithful, O Father. Thank you for your work. Bless your name, God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Bless your name, Father. Alléluia. 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 Amen. Amen. Somebody tell to somebody that God says. God says, rejoice, rejoice. Ah, say, God says, rejoice. Hallelujah. 
Aleluya. Aleluya. Your God is faithful. Amen. Your God is faithful. Spell with me faithful. F A I T H F U L. That spell faithful. Meaning full of faith and a faith that is full. <laughs> Amen. Your God is full of faith. He's full of a faith that is full. Hallelujah. He is faithful. If you're lacking, he is full of that faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. So, because he is faithful, he can fill you and fill you with faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, my faith. My faith. Be, the, be thou fooled be in the name of Jesus Christ. My soul. my soul. Be filled with faith that comes from above, from the Father of lights. Hallelujah. We're going to continue on the second part of our word that we have spoken last Sunday. Believe. There shall be a performance. Hmm. Tonight, I mean today, I need to be refilled with the faith of the Most High. There are many things ahead of us. There are many challenges ahead of us. There are many doors also ahead of us. But I need the faith that clarify my path. So I do not walk with questioning. I walk with praise. Amen. I need the faith that makes me walk with praise on my lips. Tell somebody. I need the faith, need the faith that make me walk with praise. On my lips. Oh my. Mm. See. When God did not see. He did not care that he did not see. He told what he wanted to see. And he saw what he wanted to see. Hallelujah. Let me repeat it again. When God did not see light, he did not care that there was no light. He told to the light that he wanted to see. And he saw the light that he wanted to see. For there was light. Ah, a faith that makes me not wonder, but only praise. Hey, somebody say, Lord, let the spiritual surgery open now my heart and my soul and feel inside your feet. I need to be on the divine table for a spiritual surgery to open my heart and to fill it with your faith. Mm. A faith that makes me have the praise on my lips. A faith that does not make me wonder what that I will see, but that make me say what I want to see. You know, in mathematics, 
they have things that they call theorem. Theorem, right? Is that theorem? Which is supposed to be somebody who has understood a way of solving a problem. And then he has put together a theory that will bring about a solution to the problem. That can be applicable on different problems and bring about the same solution. Am I right? And when the person found that theory, other people can build on that theory and develop other solutions. I even want something. For light to start, God has to first speak the light. So people were already filled with the knowledge of finding light. And based on that truth, they start searching to improve of what was existing. For science and mathematics only do and does based on what is already existing. But there is nothing under the... Let me say that again. They say science is a discovery or the observation. You don't observe what is not. Hallelujah. So for us children of God, we only observe and behold what he has already said. Even if we don't see, it does not make it not existing. Doesn't make sense. They did not see the airplane, did they? They did not even have the imagination of airplane. But the basis of the truth is that God made the fly and the birds. Hallelujah. When he made the bird, he instructed inside the knowledge of discovering the airplane. But they were looking on the sky. They could not see an airplane. And one day somebody said, mm -mm, hold on a second. Look how that bird is taking off. Look how he spread his wings. Look how he lived and, and he, he soared in the wind. The mass of the bird does not cause him to drop down. He only rise up. So what is the thing? What is the theory behind it that calls to that thing to rise against gravity? So somebody sat down upon the existing of what God made. And he developed something that he did not see yet. Say, God, open my eyes. Eh? Mm. You see, I do not want to talk about what somebody did. I want somebody to talk about what I did. Hallelujah. You do not want somebody to tell you about what somebody did. You want somebody to tell about what you did. What did God open your eyes unto that caused you to do and that caused the world to say indeed there was in this place a man who has shifted the atmosphere? People of God, say, Lord, enlarge my heart and fill it with faith. Fill it with faith. You got to fill it like, like, like you, got to, you got to fill your faith with the faith of God. A faith that makes you walk with praise on your lips. And that makes you see the performance there. A faith that does not tell you whether you will arrive. But a faith that will tell you how you want to arrive. Do you want to arrive with an airplane or with a jet or with, uh, how we call the other one? The rocket. rocket. How do you want to arrive? Tell it. 
not a faith that is telling you whether God will allow you to arrive. But a faith that prays God for allowing you to arrive. It says, there is a donkey. The cult of a donkey. By the road. By the crossroad. I want you to go and to untie it. All he told us is go and do what? Untie it. Now, I don't know how long the cult, I said the cult, the, the cult was there. I don't know. Eh? Who it belongs to, I don't know. What I do know is that somebody who did not buy that coat appointed that coat to be utilized. His word was bankable. His word was a check that was sufficient to untie that coat. All he told, he said, when you go, you will find a coat that is tied down by the road. What, do not ask to whom belongs the coat. For the earth and everything thereof belongs to the so you go, see the coat, untie it, take it, and come. But if somebody tells you, why are you untying that coat? Uh, you answer what? Has. If the master has need of it, then it means that wherever the cult belongs, whomever the cult belongs to, when the master changed the title of the cult, are you what I'm saying? Regardless who the thing belongs to, somebody has built whatever he wants to build. When he finished to build, God now put your name on it. Now what does the person have to do? He calls you, he gives you the title. Listen, you got to have faith that make you see the things that you do not see, but that you wanted to see, so that you see the things that you wanted to see. That faith is because Christ before thee has said that I will make you prosperous, open your borders, break the limitation, and give you the territory that the no, no, that the saw of your shall trample upon. But in order for it to manifest, you must believe. Remember what believe in means? Who remember that? Hey, you forgot. You forgot already. Hey. Last Sunday we talked about believe. What does it mean, believe? Uh, uh? No. Uh huh. No, yeah, you know, Jesus. Last Sunday we talked about three elements. Mm. Believe, believe. Three elements that makes belief. The first is what? No. Let's go back to the word. Give me First Corinthians. Uh, sorry, give me Luke. Luke chapter one. Give me Luke chapter one. Bring me from verse forty. Remember, we saw it from Mary. Belief before you start, like belief. What is inside belief? How does it manifest? How do you know you believe? You remember that? Who remember that? Okay, praise God. Give me the word. Luke chapter one. Luke chapter 1, verse 40. Mm -hmm. and no, I'm so sorry. 30, 30. Verse 30. Mm -hmm. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor. Fear not, Mary, God. for thou hast found favor in the sight of God. Before God. God. Continue. And behold, thou shalt conceive in 
thy womb. Remember, first thing of belief is what? You have a deep desire that grabs your heart. You know you have belief because God drops in you a deep desire that grabs your heart that wants you to achieve that thing. Do you remember that? You don't. How do you know you believe? Because first thing, God himself drop inside of you, does a surgery in you, and plant inside something that is a desire that is so divine that you cannot let go until you see it manifest. Believe. Not, not the, uh, I would say that. Not, um, eh, uh, or, oh, the other one, uh, give me the word. Not the hope for, but an evidence of something that is inside of you that you know, not you hope. You, ha you have come from the hope into the know that you know this one. God wants me to fulfill it. Continue. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bear. And behold, thou shalt conceive. In thy womb. In thy womb. And brings forth. So before belief comes, you conceive something. That is inside your soul that cannot go. However, that you hear or you see. That thing is conceiving you by the Holy Ghost. You know what I'm saying? It is conceived in you by the Holy Holy Ghost. Listen, when Solomon wanted to build a temple, was he a cheap temple? But who gave the design of the temple? Who gave that to David? Ha ha ha. For David said, I did according on how I saw in the spirit on how he instructed me. The same way he gave the design of the, um, I got the, of the covenant to Moses. He said, Moses, you're going to build something. By the way, you're going to build it. I will show you the length, the height, the width on how you will make it. He gave even the, the description of the measurement. Hallelujah. Of everything. Same thing he did with who? Noah. You see? When he planted that desire in Noah to do the ark, Noah believed because he was planted. Amen. Did he see the evidence of rain before to do the ark? So why are you waiting that somebody called you before for you to stop and step up? I, I, you know what I'm saying? In the case of Mary over here, Elizabeth did not call her for her to go there. Amen? She believed the report and she stepped out. Second thing of belief is that somebody will confirm what God has spoken to you by the revelation of the Holy Ghost. For the word of God says what? Continue. Verse 32. Uh -huh. He shall be great uh -huh. and shall be called the and, and shall be called the son of the highest. Mm. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Now, now, now I, I, know, I know that you understand this one on the basis of the dogma or the doctrine or the, the theology. Meaning the Lord, son of God and so forth. But let me get you something else inside. The Bible says he shall be great, he shall be called the son of the highest. Now, if you understand correctly the word of God, you also understand that the word of God has spirit inside. Amen? It's not only the letter. Amen? It shall be great. It shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. We know that by then David was no longer his direct father. Amen? David was rather his great, 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 past, great, great, Amen? Some, some ancestor. Hallelujah. 
But how does he explain? He says, the throne in God I gave unto you. He gave the throne. He cuts down all the genealogy that is between you and David. And then approach you directly and cause you to be a direct son. Does it make sense? He, so he calls David not the ancestor. Because technically David was the ancestor. He was not the father. He was the ancestor. But he did not call David his ancestor. He called him father. When God appoints you to rise, he casts down all the middlemen and then brings you directly to the one who has to give you what is needed for you. When God himself appoints you to take over something, you see, you want to see, speak to one, to whosoever. But between you and the person, there are so many steps and secretaries. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So many steps that you, before you have said this thing to that person, before he arrives over, he has so many steps that finally you don't even have the time to meet the person who is a deci the, the decision maker. So when God conceives in you the faith to believe, he also conceives for you the title that makes you receive directly by skipping all the middlemen. That's why when you go to get the coat, you don't ask the middleman where is the coat. Are you what I'm saying? When you go to get it, you only go to get it because the assignment that God has spoken over you is go and get it. Say, go and get it. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. The assignment of God is not go and ask. Is go and get. Mm. You, got, you got to tell to yourself. You know, you have, you have to speak yourself into the trust of the word of God. You got to speak your soul. You got to commend your soul into trusting the word of God and tell to your feet to fulfill what God has spoken to your soul. Are you what I'm saying? He said, go get it. Period. He's going to give you the throne of David, your father. All the ancestors that was in between you and David. He cut all this. He reproached you. He called you over there. I said, call you. Stick you. <laughs> God call is a French word. He's going to give you the throne of David, your father. Give, let's, let's go back, please. Let's go back. He shall be. He, he shall reign. No, no. Huh? First, he shall be great. He shall be great. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, God is looking at what is uh, conceived in you. That's how you have faith and belief. He deposits in you that idea. You conceive that idea. And he tells you ahead of time that what you're going to do is going to be great. It tells you ahead of time that what he conceived in you and you will nurture it and you will invest into it. He said the outcome going to be. So if it is middle, are you stopping? Hallelujah. If it is 90%, are you stopping? Because he told you ahead of time that what is giving you shall be great. Can somebody pull me the dictionary, the word great? He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. From the highest throne, from the highest kingdom, that's where your direction will come from. Your inspiration will come from, eh? Of an extent, amount, or intensity considerably above the normal or average. Ooh. The ability, quality, or eminence considerably above the normal or average. Read it again. The ability, quality. No, no. The word is what? Great. Go ahead. Tell great. 
of a bill great. Yes. Of an of an extent. Um, of what? Of an extent. Of what? An extent. An extent, and then what? Amount. An extent, am, amount, and of what? Or intensity. Or in intensity of what? Considerably above. Considerably above. above. What? The normal or average. The normal or the average. average. Give me that in verse amplified. Luke chapter 1 verse 32. Yes, in amplified version. Go ahead. He will be great and eminent. E eminent. The word eminent. When you say to somebody, your eminence, what does it mean? Your highest. Your, your, your greatest of the greatest. If what you do has not arrived to the eminency, you know you still have to push through. Here's a problem. You are settling for the average and the normal. That's the spirit of Antichrist because that spirit has not obeyed the word of Christ. Are you know what I'm saying? Antichrist, he goes against the word that Christ told you to do. When Christ says you to do something and then you do the contrary or the fulfillment of what you said, and he said you are going anti against his fulfillment. You are not called to be average. A hallelujah. You, if you say, I am not called to be normal. I am not called to be average. You shall be great. For what was conceived inside is of God. He has a problem with Gideon. He look on Gideon, he say, Gideon, <laughs> you are a great mighty warrior. Gideon say, eh, where I'm sending? I am a literation floor. I'm doing wit. I flip it, it goes up, the wind takes the chest out and gives back the width. Meanwhile, all the dust of the wheat is all over me. And then you tell me in that condition on the threshing floor, standing where my father does not even know the road to go to the temple, I will be a great warrior. My name is, my, my name is Gideon. It's not Samson. <laughs> Hallelujah. My name is, you see... Did the Lord spoke before by saying that he will make Gideon? No. Gideon just was there and one morning the angel came and told him, hey, differently from Samson, Samson was spoken of by, amen? And he was born of, but Gideon, nobody spoke about him. Hallelujah. Gideon, nobody spoke about him. He was there. He was doing his stuff. No prophet prophesied about him. Hallelujah. No word of uh, uh, knowledge came for him. Hallelujah. There was no revelation that came in his dream. Hallelujah. He was just doing his average thing. He was just doing his normal thing. He was in the midst of the threshing floor. Hallelujah. And God said... I have conceived in him something that is greater than the average he does. So when the days arrive, God said, now it's time to become great. Are you following me? When the time arrive, it, you know, that's the beauty of it. You don't see Gideon praying. You don't. Do you? When God comes, he was he praying. When God, somebody help me with this one. When God wants to assign you the greatness that he has put on your name. When the time come, whether you pray or not, 
whether you're Christian or not, that day, it is God who said it is assigned unto you. That day, whether you want or not, he will come. The guy was not prophesied about. He was not like, 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 like a Jacob and Esau. Amen? They were prophesied about. That you will have two children. The one will be the first, but the first will be the last, and the last will be the greatest. He was not prophesied about. His name did not mean much. He was just Gideon. But when the day arrived, hallelujah, say when the day arrived, when the day arrived, suddenly he catapulted me into greatness. The conception that God has planted inside your soul, he said it shall be great. Considerably above average and normal. Believe there shall be a performance. The words that God has spoken are even above you, way beyond above you. It is that word that carries you into destination. It's not you carrying the word of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Habakkuk, it says, write down the vision so that it may what? It may run who reads it. So you are not the one running the vision. It's the vision running you. It's the word of God that takes you on wings. Amen? And that calls you to go. Give me back the word, please. He will be great and eminent and will be called the son of the most high of the most high and the lord god will do what give him the throne of his father david now let me explain this a little bit more think about the time we, as i said we understand the theology of it we understand the the, the how we call it the context of it amen Meaning David in the sense where David was the one called by God and through David there was an establishment of the reign of the kingdom to come and then the Lord was in a way of a speech that he received the throne of David. He was not the physical father. We understand all this, right? Amen. But as I said, we want to go further in the spirit of the word. He, the Lord God, will give him the throne of his father, David. And I already explained unto you, God, that when he appoints you to something, he will cut down all the middle things and you go straight to the source. Now, think about the time of David. When David, oh Lord Jesus, when David was about to die, he's around 70 years old, we do see there is a fight between the children trying to figure out who's going to be the, to the, the next king. Uh, and then uh, the brother, who's his name? Adonijah, right? Adonijah, he's, uh, he's rising himself and taking over the throne. And then you see somewhere in the corner, uh, who was that guy? Um, uh, Solomon, Solomon uh, wandering for his life, he and his mother. And so there is an ongoing in the situation. When you look at the prophecy of Solomon, uh, I mean concerning Solomon, God said that uh, it will be Solomon that will build the, 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 the what? The temple. Listen, listen carefully. Can you find for me where the word of God said that it will be Solomon to whom he will give the throne? The promise was he will build the temple. Hallelujah. Give me back in that verse. In that promise. Where God was promising, the, the, the original promise, not the promise repeated by David. The promise that was given unto Solomon when David was praying. And then Solomon, the Lord came unto, uh, no, not David was praying. Uh, he told unto Nathan, amen. 
And he told him, go tell my son David, my servant David, this is what's going to happen concerning the throne. Hallelujah. Give me that verse and we'll continue. But meanwhile, what God plants plants in you to make you conceive what is from him, the purpose of it is clear, is to be great and eminent. When you are advancing in the plans of God, that God has assigned for your life and your family, assigned for your life and your genealogy, assigned for your life and your city, assigned for your life or whatever that is, stop considering to remain average and to remain at the normal side. Are we there? What's, what's, the, what's the, the chapter? Huh? Can we read out? What's the chapter? Go ahead, 2 Samuel chapter 7. Okay, go ahead, please, on the screen for us. So 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 17. Can we have on the screen, please? Okay. Now, go ahead for me, please. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 17. Nathan spoke to David in accordance with all these words and all of this vision. Then King David went in and sat in prayer before the Lord. No, no, let's go back because that was when he spoke. So let's go back to verse 1. 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 1. Uh -huh. When King David lived in his house, palace, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, mm -hmm. the king said to Nathan the prophet, mm -hmm. See now, I dwell in a house of Sedar, mm -hmm. but the ark of God dwells within tent curtains. Mm -hmm. And Nathan said to the king, Go, mm -hmm. do everything that is in your heart, mm -hmm. for the Lord is with you. Mm -hmm. But it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, mm. saying, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you be the one to build me a house in which to dwell? Mm -hmm. For I have not dwelt in a house since the day I brought the sons, descendants of Israel up from Egypt, mm. even to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent, even in a tabernacle. Verse 7. Wherever I have gone with all the Israelites, did I speak a word to any from the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, asking, Why have, have you not built me a house of Sedar? Mm -hmm. Verse 8. So now say this to my servant David. Mm -hmm. Thus says the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. I took you from the pasture. I took you from the pasture. I took you from the pasture. I, I, I want us to do a little bit on this one. The Lord speaking to David. Why is God reminding to David where he took him from? God already knows where he took David from. Amen? I can assume that David knows also where God took him. But when God is speaking to him, he's speaking to him in a remembrance way. And he says, I took you from the pasture. God says, before he started putting on you the seed for greatness, he already assigned to that seed to only make you great. So however you are, wherever you are, when God says, I want you to advance and go, even if you are in the midst of pasture, he will do what? He will, come here. He will take you like this <laughs> and transport you. The Bible say, I took you from. Hallelujah. It's not like I led you from, the, I took you from the pasture, hallelujah, from following the sheep to be ruler of my people, Israel. Listen. I cannot stop stressing over the same fact. Those of you born in the United States, God takes you out of your family 
to make you somebody he wants you to be in order to break the lineage of the curse of the family. Hallelujah. Those of you born outside of the United States, God took you out of your father's house. Hallelujah. And planted. Are you following what God is saying? He took you from so that you be. When you see that you are not yet in the be of the great and that you are in the be of the normal, then you know your assignment is there. You must fulfill it. It's not you pray a boss where there. No, you know that it is there. It shall be a performance. It's not, Lord, I hope that I would. It's not, Lord, that I pray that I would. God says, I took you. Amen. You were just in a pasture. When God was speaking of who he's going to take, it was not David who sent him a letter. Amen. For a matter of fact, David had seven brothers. Hallelujah. And they were stronger and beautiful than him. They were serving already in the army. They were strengthened enough and trained enough to fulfill that specific position. Even the mouthpiece of God, the authorized mouthpiece of God, wanted to thwart the plan of God. Amen. Nathan went. The first guy he saw, he said, This is the Lord Joyce. You are God. Said, mm -mm. I, I said, Nathan, Samuel, Samuel, thank you. God said, mm -mm. Stop. I, I, did not, I, I did not tell you that was the one. Hallelujah. Imagine Samuel, he arrives after he heard God telling him, Go, I will show you the one that you will anoint king over my people. So Nathan arrives with so much anointing, so much spirit, loaded with divine instruction. When he arrives, the Bible says he sees the first one. He says, wow, surely this is what God has chosen. Samuel, Samuel, not Nathan. He opens his eyes. He sees and his eyes and his faith combine together to thwart the plans of God. <laughs> because he was not speaking by doubt. <laughs> Hallelujah. Before to go there, he heard God. Amen. He was on assignment. He was clear in his mind. God told him already, I'm going to show you. So for him, as soon as I enter, the one that is shown is the one that is chosen. See yourself there. You don't have a particular, a particular, I don't know, skill, a particular preference in your family. You are not the one that everybody say, ah, this one will be the greatest. You are not the one everybody bank the how we say that? You see, like, uh, invest on. They say this one. Kill, plow, kill, nesh. I need to send this child to do this, 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 this. Sometimes they look at you and they say, don't you see your brothers? <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They look at you and they say, God said, he came. And then he saw through the eyes of Samuel. And Samuel said that this one I see surely is a choice of God. You see, when God, Lord Jesus, when God says, I have a sign and took you, he takes you out of seven other people in your family who were all qualified. Each one after the other. Oh, is this one? God says no. Surely this one. 
God says, no. Ah, ah is this one. God says, no, that's already three. How many times can you get really wrong? But, but, but I know, I know God's, oh, is this one. Already four. But this time, by the spirit of the Lord, thus hear the Lord. Is this one? I didn't say it. <laughs> you already how many? Five. So the guy has a, the horn of oil ready to pour out. He's like this. Looking for a head. Even the prophet wants to anoint somebody. But God says, I did not put that name there. David was about, you know, he was dealing about his uh, sheep. The brother did not smell like David. Amen? David was smelling different. Because he was dealing with sheep. After the fifth, finally, Prophet Samuel says, it might be this one. And God says, sorry. And the one. Now, after you have, you got it wrong six times, you get it? Like you got the word of God wrong six times. But prior you got it wrong, you had the word of God who spoke to you. So all your assumptions are not even fulfilled. But God says, you only assume from what I said. Let me show you from what I said. Finally, he sees the seventh. He says, okay, at least it's the number of perfection. It should be him. And then it's not him. And then notice what is Samuel said. Samuel said, but Jesse, are there all your children here? <laughs> you see, the one that God has assigned, he does not need to be present in order for him to receive the power. It is your name that is written there. It is not your flesh. You feel what I'm saying? Your name is written in the memory of the one that God has said, bless that one. So why are you toiling and then struggling? What you do, do it right. What you do, do it correctly. Do it orderly. God has written that name of yours. In the memory of the one he has assigned in order to bless you. Then David, the Bible says, when he asks, but are there all your children here? He said, ah, there is. You know, this is what I'm saying. It's not a kind of like a, oh yeah, yeah, there is this uh, David, my son. He <laughs> was not that way. Huh? <laughs> there is a flag, a flag, a one. The, 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 the forgotten, rejected one. He is skinny like this. He spent his time eating grass with the, the sheep. And he stink. His name is David. So they had to send the brothers to go fetch David. David, come. Prophet Samuel is calling you. It looks like God may have an appointment for you. We're not sure, but come. It, it might be also because Samuel did not see you. So he thought it was you. So let him see you. And he will realize it's not you that he was the first one. David arrives. David, is that you? When David arrives, he enters the home. You see everybody putting their masks on. <laughs> what is that anointing? It smells. <laughs> 
But you see, when God wants to anoint you, he does not care about the perfume you put on. Are you what I'm saying? When God wants to anoint you, he does not care about whatever it is on your life. When he wants to anoint you, the anointing that he has for you is, is heavy enough to break every yoke. Hallelujah. That anointing is heavy enough to break every yoke. Every other perfume that was on your life will just be englobed in that anointing. And there God says, this is the one I have chosen. So God said, I took you from the pasture and I put you to be ruler. So when God is about to pass that anointing over Jesus, he makes sure that he cut off all the in-between so he can replicate the dynamic of that anointing to deposit on him. So it says the throne of your father to be great. You only see a seed that will be great because of the nature of that seed. You only see a seed that will be great because of the nature of that seed. Where did that seed come from? Your seed comes from God. The word is the seed that God has spoken. If God that is great has spoken that seed over you, that seed can only be great. A seed of papaya will not give baobab. Are you what I'm saying? However the papaya tries, it will remain papaya. When that seed has come from the baobab, however it takes, it will become baobab. Because the one who has given seed to that seed is also a baobab. The God who has spoken over you, the word of God says, is the God of the universe. Believe. There shall be a performance. It shall be great. Considerably above average and no more size. For the seed was given by the one who gives the seed for increase. Belief there shall be a performance. Of the things that the word of God has spoken and that your hearing have heard. For it was your name that he has called. Believe. Believe. There shall be a performance. Give me back the word please. So now, say to say this to my servant. Now let's go David. back to uh, first uh, Luke chapter one. Let's read now from verse thirty-three. Luke chapter one, starting from verse thirty-three. Mm -hmm. Do we have it on the screen? Luke chapter one, verse thirty-three. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, mm -hmm. and he will reign over the house of Jacob. And he will reign over the house of Jacob, Jacob Israel, Israel mm -hmm. forever. Uh -huh. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin and have no, and, and have no intimacy with any man? Mm. Then the angel replied to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you like a cloud. For that reason, 
the holy, pure, sinless child shall be called the son of God. Now let, let me, as I said, we understand the context of that word. We know he speaks about the Lord Jesus. We understand the dogma of it, the doctrine of it, the instruction of it. But I, I want to put for you the spirit of that word. He says, then the angel replied unto her when she said, how ah, will that greatness be? How ah, will that manifestation be? How ah, will that miracle happen? The angel says, listen, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you. Ah. Now, put yourself in this position. The first thing first is that the idea that runs in your mind from God, uh, what it means, idea that comes from God. So those ideas will not perform themselves by your will, but they will carry you by the will of God so that your will be aligned to the will of God to fulfill his will. Does it make sense? Let me explain again. When God deposits in you his ideas, his conception, his assignment, he put in those ideas power, and that power overshadows you. And that power conceives in you even the will to fulfill the will of God. And because of that power, even when you want to stay, like you want to stay at the level of the average, that power that overshadows you push you further. That doesn't make sense. Because he overshadows you. You are clouded by the power of the Messiah. So the will of God becomes your will. The desires of God becomes your desires. The thought that God has assigned to your mind becomes a thought that you are thinking. The assignment of the will, the assignment of the destination, the assignment of the vision becomes the vision that is clearer by the spirit of God. And that spirit is only pushing you to go beyond average. So as you continue to walk in the will of God, it pushes you to say, don't stay into the normal. Don't stay into the average. You are supernatural. Are you following what I'm saying? The God that you have called, the God that you served, he has supernaturally chosen you out of your family and put over you something to overshadow you so that the enemy cannot identify you. So you can walk under the spirit of God to fulfill the will of God. Until you fulfill that will, you will not rest. So the Holy Ghost will come upon you. And the power of God will overshadow you. So everything that boils inside of you is, Lord, I need to fulfill your will. I need to do your will. I need to walk in your will. I need to make it happen. Lord, I'm not going to let someone else do the work that you have assigned. Use me. And because of that word of God, you start boiling of desires. Your desires start being so aligned to the will of God. For he said, if thou delight thyself in me, amen. If thou delight thyself in me, I will grant you the desire that boils in your heart. Those desires come from the throne of the Most High. Those desires are desires that makes you not be content with the limitation that the earth has placed upon you. When you walk and you see the barriers, you say, God, you did not call me to a dead hand. You called me to cross the Red Sea. Are ah, you know what I'm saying? So at that point, as you see the Red Sea, as you see the challenges, you are not complaining why is that difficult. You are saying, I got praise on my mouth. I got praise on my lips. The faith that God has planted in me gets me going and takes me to only believe it shall be a 
path a performance. Believe. Believe. Give me back the word. Then the angel did what? Reply to her. What did he say? Then the angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You cannot do it without the... Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You cannot do it without the Holy Ghost. He must come upon you in order to take the thing that was conceived in you by God to make it tangible to your conscience. And that you see within your flesh the burning desire to press on. And as you see the limitation of the earth, of the average and the normal, you say, I was not called to be here. I was called to be there. And the faith of Christ that is stronger than the faith of your forefathers will assign you a throne that is called earth. For the Spirit will come upon you. And what? And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And the power of the Most High. Let me explain to you a little bit how the power of the Most High works. Somebody turn for me this light. This light over there. Go ahead. Turn off this light. This one. The first one on the top. Okay. So this light is off, right? If I turn off this light, you see, but you see like in a shadow. I want you to turn off the light over there for me, please. Yeah, this one here. Exactly. Now, do you see me? But you see, even though you see me, that power of that light over there is not enough to have clarity. So what God says, he will take his power, not the power that the world provides to you, not the power that man provides to you, and he will connect you to a source of power. Go ahead. And then when he connects you to that source of power, he will not stay there because he's not working in the average. Is not working in the normal. So he will connect you in another power again. And then as he connects you to the second power, he will not stay there. He does not work on one side. He does not work on two sides. He brings into the perfection and he will pull down the third power and you will be shadowed by that power. And now things are clearer and things that you do are clearer. Your path is clearer. Your work is clearer. Your thoughts are clearer. Your desire are clearer. Your prayers are clearer. Your steps are clearer. Your path are clearer. Your mind is clearer. And things are clearer. There is no shadow. There is light. And you see and you walk and you arrive Arrive and you pass the limitation of the average. He takes you. He connects you to the power of the Mosai. And then you start distributing power. And you start carrying that power. And you start carrying that light of the certainty of the clarity of God. And your thoughts are being now aligned. And you start believing there shall be a performance. Continue. Verse 36. Verse 36. And listen, even your relative Elizabeth, 
has also conceived a son in her old age. And she who was called barren is now in her sixth. So what God is saying is that when the season in which he has appointed you to rise arrives, he does not cause you to rise alone. He also appoints other people that he has also caused to arise and appointed to arise. And he will bring them so that you connect with the right people. You connect with the right crowd. You connect with the people who have the mind of God and who understand the supernatural. For she was in a hard age and she has experienced something unusual. She was in a hard age and she, was, she, she has experienced something that is not heard of. So the Lord is now telling to Mary, see, even your cousin Elizabeth, she has conceived of a child in her old age. And then Mary understand that connotation of that parable of the word. She says, I understand I need to go and connect it to the anointing that is flowing there. Because one can take a 1,000 by two can take 10,000 down. So I'm going to gravitate around the assignment of God and the assigned people of God because the assignment that God has for us is an assignment to bring about the kingdom and the rule of God. Our Father, what is the prayer? Our Father in and allow he be thy, 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 and thy be on as it is. Lord, in your heavenly, there is power. In your heavenly, there is clarity. In your heavenly, there is access. In your heaven, there is clear performance of the things of who you are. In your heaven, the throne is clear. In your heaven, we know who you are. Let thy name that is known in heaven be known even in before the eight years. So as you walk, the one who even does not believe in God, we have to agree that the God you worship is true. He will have to perform the things that was spoken of God. Believe. There shall be a performance. But this work is not of man. It's of God. He was the one who conceived it. And planted that in your heart. And now you have that desire to see it fulfill and continue. Because the power of God is overshadowing, overshadowing you. Continue, please. Verse 37. Verse 37. For with God, nothing is of, is, or ever shall be impossible. For with God, nothing is impossible. Or with God, I am possible. Hallelujah. With God, I am possible. There is nothing impossible that God said he will do that he won't be able to do. So it gives her the announcement. He says, I don't want you to only look into what God is doing in your life. But I want you to associate it to also what God is doing in the life of somebody. That is of a supernatural activity. Meaning, it is a season of the activities of God upon the earth. Because when it touches you, it touches somebody else. So God is now raising us an army that come together in order to fulfill the plans and the will of God. Believe there shall be a performance. Continue please for the word. Verse, Verse 38. 38. Uh -huh. 38. Mm -hmm. Then Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Now give me this one into the King James. Luke chapter 1, 38, King James. Uh -huh. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Behold, as I told you last time, she is confirming that she is the handmaid. 
Amen. Whatever God wants to do with his hand, hallelujah, she's available to be born with. Whatever, however God wants to make it happen in her life, she's available to be utilized, to make it happen. But here's the thing. God, before to start doing what he wanted to do in her life or in your life, he said, that thing shall be great. Hallelujah. That thing shall be great. Before he started telling you all those different things that comes down the road, he says, it shall be great. Read again, verse 38. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, mm. be it unto me according to thy word. Mm. And the angel departed from her. Hallelujah. Verse 39. And Mary arose. Hallelujah. And Mary arose. And Mary arose. Now, before she arose, the angel has to depart. You know, when God is bringing you things and then speaking to you in his way, you know, it comes sometimes with like a, with a shadow that makes you be a kind of like, whoa, Lord. Like you can sometimes feel it, but this time will pass. When it passes, you need now to arise. Hallelujah. The mistake that we do as the children of God is that when we are feeling the, the pressure of the Spirit of God in those time of prayer, uh, we have the impression after that time passes that uh, we are not feeling something to move. No, just get your feet and arise. Hallelujah. The Bible said the angel now departed after he did all that speech. Then Mary arose. But she arose in those days. What it means that when the Lord starts speaking to you and then you start feeling and knowing that God is moving, in those days is the time to arise. Hallelujah. Don't wait after the, those days have passed. No, arise in those days. And then she did what? And went into the hill country with haste. Into a city of Judah. Hallelujah. Amen. She went into the hill. Amen. She did not go down. She went up. Amen. So she went into the hill with haste into the city of Judah. Because her faith caused a mouth to have praise on her lips. Hallelujah. And she went with haste, haste, because she understood the praise of that announcement. She understood that that conception that God has planted in her was not something that came from her just fleshly desire. And then verse 40. Verse 40. Mm. And entered into the house of Zacharias. Ah. And saluted Elizabeth. She entered into the house of Zachariah. Why she didn't salute Zachariah? Because he was mute. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he was mute. Over. He didn't believe. Amen. But she saw the one who believed just like her. She said, hey, Elizabeth. Hey. Zachariah was over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is connecting you with those people who can praise God with you. Amen. You see, Zachariah, he had also the spirit of God upon him. You know, he was a, the priest, the high priest, actually. But for those things that was happening in those days, he was not the right fit. Amen. She needed to assemble with someone who can identify and say what God says. You know, sometimes they are Christian, they are around you, they, they receive something from God, they don't say anything. When it happened, hey, I knew it. Shh. You do not know nothing. Try it. If you knew it, why you didn't say something? <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't like those Christians because they're always there. They say, they're like Zachariah. They're mute. When the thing happened, mm, I knew it. Ah, uh -huh, you knew it. You are Sambala. 
Because you were there, we didn't know, you did not say anything. So if, you, <laughs> hallelujah, you want the one that God has assigned who can see and speak, who are not afraid to say what God says he will do in your life because they, they themselves, they see what God is doing in their lives. Let me tell you something. It does not matter how much you hear from God. You need to hear from the spirit of God through your brother. She just heard from the angel. Hallelujah. She just heard from the angel. And as a matter of fact, the gift and the anointing and the, uh, the, 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 the child she has is greater than the one that uh, was in the name. Please have that. But notice something. When she arrives, the Bible says, verse 41, tell, tell for me. And it came to pass uh, that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary. When Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary. Mary. The babe leaped in the, the womb. The babe leaped in the womb. Hallelujah. Amen. That baby that was in the womb for six months, he was just there and he was uh, drinking sweet tea, doing nothing. Something he was, he was just laying down. He was doing nothing. But when he heard the salutation that was coming from another dimension. Amen. Hallelujah. He started leaping, connecting to that salutation. You see, when God is, as, uh, when, when he's speaking to you and you are aspiring to do the things of God, uh, he brings you into the right alignment of people that he has uh, assigned to help you or to work with you. Because of you, the things that they have that was just there, we start growing. We start lifting up. We, we, we start rising. They have received something, but they need also what God has spoken to you so that they, what they have also start now germinating. So you thinking that God has given something to you, but God has given to you for everybody else. For the blessings in your hands are not given for you only. It's given so that through you, other be blessed. But he told unto Abraham, through you, Now, when you start conceiving in your mind that God has given you those things so that you can praise his name, that's good. But conceive in your mind that it's so that you'll be utilized to cause other people to praise his name. You can no longer hide those things. You can no longer expect it to be average. You can no longer expect to be normal. Continue, please. And it came to pass mm. that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, mm. the babe leaped in her womb, mm. and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm. And she spake out with a loud voice. Hallelujah. Amen. She spake out with a loud, loud voice. voice. Now, I don't know how loud voice is for you, but loud voice means loud. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, I remember one day I went to North Carolina. It was in, um, uh, there is a place we call... Um, uh, how we call it? Uh, West Hand. Somewhere down there, in the, it's, it's mostly like white people out there. So I went, I was living with a, a family. And then we went to a church that was a Baptist church. When we went in that church, the entire church, they have like about like 1,000 people in, those, in that church. The entire church is just white people. You know what I'm saying? So I was the first guy who entered with my black skin. <laughs> so I entered in. You know, by the time I say brother, the guy knows that I'm not from there. <laughs> if you don't know by my skin, we know by my word. Amen. So I arrived in that church and I saw everyone was sitting. Nobody was, was like they were sitting quiet. So the pastor came, he started preaching, he finished the word of God. And they see, you see them? Amen. And then after the word of God was finished, you see them. Amen. I was like, that's not the church I used to be. You know, because the church I used to grow. Amen! You see what I'm saying? So I went to that church and then we So that was the first day. So the second Sunday, I went there. The preacher was preaching. I, 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 I was like a John. You know, remember the man called John in the movie. So... I could not hold myself. 
I was boiling on my on myself, and the preacher was preaching, and I said, Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody turn their head. Look at who's screaming over there without the accent from Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. And then, so, anyway, I went to another church also. We call it the Church of the Mennonite. In the Church of the Mennonite, they don't have beard, okay? They shave very good, and they wear um, uh, a white T-shirt, and then they all drive, all of them, without, without fail. They all drive a black car. So if you are a Mennonite and you drive a blue car, you're in problem. Like all of them, they all have black cars. So I went to that shirt that day. They put on the top, they said, all are welcome. So when I saw it, I told to my wife, I, I'm going to try that word <laughs> to see if all are welcome. And she said, okay. So after a Sunday, we went. She dropped me. And I was wearing that, that like this suit, but it was red. Can you imagine? A black guy in a red suit with a beard. So when I was coming, by the time I was coming in, the women are on this side and the men are on this side. They don't mingle together. So by the time I was coming in, the entire church turned like this. So from the place my wife left me to go, they look at me until I enter the church. So when I entered the church, finally I sat down in a spot and there was a little boy who was standing, I mean sitting with his dad before me. For the whole service it was like this. <laughs> he could not believe that a black man with a beard in a red suit were just in the church of his father. But somehow that day, the preaching, you know what the, the pastor preached about? That day, I don't know if it was the Holy Ghost who gave him that word or what, I don't know. But that day he preached about people who dress strangely and differently than them. I say, how many people dress strangely and differently than you here? <laughs> Hallelujah. He preached about that and telling to all the church that you have to understand that even people don't look like you, don't dress like you, it does not mean they are not Christian. And you see everybody being like this. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. All this is to say that when Elizabeth saw her, she didn't play the morning night. She said, hey, praise the Lord. She spoke out with a loud voice. When God is working in your life, stop trying to minimize or reduce the voice of God. Because the praise and the testimony that God brings in your life is loud. You know what I'm saying? That testimony is loud. It will speak louder. Verse 42. Go ahead, please. Verse, verse 42. Uh -huh. And she spake out with a loud voice uh -huh. and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, Lord, Lord, I am blessed among all, and you have blessed the fruit in my life. You have blessed the fruit in my life with greatness. I shall be great in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 43. Verse 43. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord mm. shall come to me? Uh -huh. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy Salutation sounded in my ears. 
the babe leap in my room for joy. Just as I said last Sunday, God will cause your voice to be recognized where he have assigned and appointed you. When God assign you into a task, when the Lord Jesus appoints you into greatness, even if you want to be silent, inside of you will speak louder. Because Christ is the altar and the finisher of your faith. He is the one who will cause you to speak the praise of his name. So regardless on how you want to hide, God going to put you on the spot. Are you what I'm saying? He going to put you on the spot. He wants you to be a testimony unto the Gentiles. He wants you to be a testimony for the word of God says, let your good deed be seen of men so that they may praise and worship your father who is in heaven. Those who do not believe that we have to say indeed when I heard what the testimony is of God in his life, when I heard the idea Ideas that God has spoken to him. When I heard about that business plan that God has put in his heart, when I heard, I could not help, but I had to pull out myself in that. He appointed you for greatness. Stop believing the average. Stop come. Believing in the average. When you hear, oh, this is normal, then you know you have to go further. When you hear, this is normal, well, that's the normal thing. That's the season. That's how it happens. Then, no, you have to go further. But before he started, he said, and that shall be great. Verse 45, and let's all read together. By then, what are you going to say? You're going to put yourself there, okay? So instead of saying, and blessed is she, you will say, and blessed is Joseph Israel, or blessed is uh, Martin. You put your name there, amen? So you have to personalize it, hallelujah. Don't say my name, Moses. If you say my name, praise the Lord, I'm a blessing collector. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> Amen. And blessed is Joseph Israel that believe for there shall be a performance of those things which were taught to Joseph Israel from the Lord. Blessed are you, says the word. For you have believed. And because you have believed, the word of God said, there shall be a performance. God will put the light on it. He will not make it happen so that nobody sees. No. The testimony of God is loud. There shall be a performance. And that will say, have you heard what God did in the life of so, so, and so? Hallelujah. Amen. Are you what I'm saying? They will testify that the same God who is able to part the Red Sea has stepped into your territory. But there shall be a performance. God, we say, put lights on. Put the smoke. Put those so that they, they know and they see. He says unto Moses, I'm about to perform something in Egypt. But listen, in order to perform that thing, I have made a guy who's called Pharaoh. And I made him for myself. 
So that the more he will say no to the will of God, the more I will perform my glory. I hear what I'm saying. He intentionally made Pharaoh so that the Pharaoh will resist to the will, so that the power of God can be even increasing. And by the time Pharaoh realized, the Bible said he told to them people, please go, but don't go empty ended. Go with the gold, go with the silver, go with the riches that we have stolen and held from thee. The enemy, the Bible says that uh, he will dress a table in the presence of my enemies. In Hebrew, it means that uh, he will cause your enemy to pay taxes for your feast. So that we not just be sitting, that we participate to your feast. Those who have held back what God has told them to do in your life, they will come and they will participate in your feast. They will invest in your feast. And then they will see the goodness of God in your life as never before. There shall be a performance. It shall be clearer. It shall be neater. It shall be performed. The light will be on. The testimony will be louder. It will be heard. God said it shall be great. Bless are you who believed for there shall be a performance of those things which were told unto thee from the Lord. You know, in the South, they say, my praise. Uh, how do you say that? Praise, praise break. Praise dance. Praise, praise break. <laughs> when I wake up this morning, I didn't have no doubt. <laughs> when I wake up this morning, in have no doubt. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. <laughs> God has not changed. He ain't going to change either. Instead of worrying on how this will be, stop praising God because he already said it shall be great. Hallelujah. The how is a great is. So it is no matter a wonder on how it shall be. He already said before to speak, it shall be great. When somebody comes to you, and gives you one dollar. Please, don't despise it. It is the beginning of every greatness. For people to come into your bosom and bless you. Hallelujah. It got to start somewhere. Do not despise what God does. Do not look it for granted or for too small. Do not see it as... It just flit three or something simple. Consider the things that he has spoken to you. And believe. For there shall be a performance. Father, I bless your name, Lord God, for your children. I thank you, Lord God, for the words that you have spoken. I thank you, Lord God, for your kingdom and your will upon each one of us. It is thy will to see and to make happen and to cause performance of thy word. I pray thee that even today, 
that be seen in each one of the lives in this place in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that the performance of the word from the Lord be established be clearer be greater and let them see the seed of greatness and bring in the fruit of greatness and eat out of the fruit of greatness in the name of Jesus Christ let every other limitation that the earth has placed upon them be removed off the lives. Let them advance according to thy will unto the end of the earth in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen.